A group of vandals smash windows and doors at Adidas headquarters in Democrat-led Portland, Oregon, in retaliation for support of World Cup in Qatar. Hmm. Portland, Adidas, Qatar, World Cup, FIFA. That's a stretch. That's a stretch, folks. But we got nine people from Abolition Media. It's kind of a media group. I did a little bit of research on it. I couldn't find a lot. I couldn't find a lot. Abolition Media believes in the whole abolition of, you know, defund the police, get rid of cops, get rid of the criminal system, get rid of the justice system, because there's been so much injustice over the years that we should just get rid of all that. And yeah, just have a free for all. Just have the purge go on on a regular basis, right? Well, nine people from Abolition Media put on ski goggles and masks to smash about 50 windows at the Adidas headquarters in Portland, Oregon on Sunday, because nothing says progress like bashing panes of glass with an inanimate object. Yeah. So the group committed the act on the day that the World Cup kicked off in Qatar and said they targeted Adidas because they are longtime supporters of FIFA. So you support FIFA, your soccer, your Adidas. I believe that's how you pronounce it in, in the whole German thing. Just kind of like Porsche, por por however you pronounce Porsche. You, you pronounce it differently in German. My girlfriend's uh, mom is from Germany. So there's a lot of this stuff that um, we say Americanized, it's wrong, but it's right because, you know, we're American and that's just what we do. So the group committed the act on the day of World Cup kicked off. How about, let's talk about the World Cup for just a second. How about Ecuador fans chanting, we want beer? Oh, that was a good one. And then Ecuador fans and was it the fans from Chile? Somebody, oh, they were saying some naughty things. FIFA awarded the 2022 World Cup in 2010, and activists have since spoken out about how thousands of migrants have perished in the Middle Eastern country. Yeah, the world cup thing is you know, bring a whole bunch of people in from Europe, you know, work their asses off, maybe don't pay them and then just kind of send them schlepping on their way. All right. Yeah, that's not cool. And then outlawing the sale of beer right before the thing took off in the actual stadiums. People are upset about that. They're hacked about that. And then you've got the whole LGBTQ thing. You know, Qatar isn't exactly known as progressive. They're not exactly accommodating. They're not inclusive of all types of things. They've got their whole, you know, religious thing going on. And yep, they don't like booze and they don't like anything outside of traditional marriage. So, but everybody's known that. This is a known quantity. So it's like, okay, so you want to go bash some windows out? Hmm. What does that, uh, what does that look like for the optics on abolition media? I'm going to say terrible, but that's kind of what they do. They basically get to this point where they say, well, you know, this is what we're doing. This is our protest uh, because nothing says protest and progress. It's kind of like the Black Lives Matter and Antifa bashing out windows throughout the United States to the tune of about $5 billion worth of damage. Nothing says progress like, yeah, just all those whacking out of windows. In a statement, the group admitted that the attack was the first of many on companies that support the World Cup until the tournament concludes. So there is a chance, there is a chance, so you're saying there's a chance, we might have some more shenanigans by abolition media. All right, let's um, let, let's see let's see what the actual article says. So, FIFA controversially awarded Qatar the 2022 World Cup in 2010. 6,500 migrant workers have perished in the Middle Eastern country. How did they get the World Cup? I mean, honestly, how did they? Yeah, it's like, all comes down to money, doesn't it? Money and influence and power. They've got what? I you know, do they have some oil reserves there? You think? Hey, that's just how this goes. So if you're going to bash out some windows of Adidas in Portland, yeah, does anybody care? Well, Adidas cares. Adidas cares, but they're a big corporation, right? They can handle it. It's when you start bashing out windows of little businesses. And, you know, I should say they can handle it from the standpoint of if it's a couple of incidents, that's fine. But long term, we are literally seeing what happens when you have 
you know, people go after businesses from a vandalism standpoint, from a graffiti standpoint, from a break-in standpoint, and from a stealing stuff standpoint, they're getting closed down. Starbucks just closed a second store in Capitol Hill. And they basically said, yep, nope, safety issues, shutting her down. So yeah, that's not going to happen with Adidas. But this is just, it's such a ridiculous thing to do, to go bash out some windows. I mean, it gets you in the media, but it doesn't, you know, you just, you're spinning your wheels doing that. Nothing is going to come of somebody bashing out windows and saying, see, we really made a point there. I mean, this is real. This is the revolution we're talking about. It's always just some people doing stupid things and not really doing things that are going to get the actions that they want. They get their name out there and they get attention, but negative attention isn't all that it's cracked up to be. Plus, you could go to jail or you could even go to prison for some of this stuff, right? A bunch of knuckleheads. But gives me a story to talk about, doesn't it? The group admitted to shattering the windows and covering the campus, the gym and cafe with paint, and said it was because companies like Adidas enable the endless violence. All right. Well, you know, violence has been ongoing since the beginning of man, right? That's just kind of how this goes. So there's some groups that just like to point to that and say, see, we're doing something about it by bashing out those windows. Huh. Yeah. To me, hard no go on this, right? I mean, most reasonable people are. Let's see. You really got your point across. So what, what was it that you're famous for? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got, you've got the solid hand action with that hammer onto the inanimate glass panes. Yeah. Oh, oh, look at you go. The author further said that the attack was first of many on FIFA company supporters this month. It's unclear if any arrests have been made. Probably not, right? Probably not. That's just. Yeah, well, maybe down the road, maybe they'll get some video and find somebody and do that whole kind of thing. But, you know, this is the crazy stuff that happens with FIFA. This is the crazy stuff that happens with the World Cup, right? I don't follow a lot of soccer, but um, the whole situation over there, there's a Seattle guy who created an app to find where your nearest location of beer or alcohol is sold because they, you know, they outlawed the... Um, sale of beer in the actual stadiums right before, right before the World Cup started. I mean, how, how pissed off do you think Budweiser was? I'm sorry, we paid how many millions and we're not going to be able to sell in the stadiums? Pardon? Um, could you repeat that? Would you? This is soccer. You realize this is, I'm sorry, this is football, right? This is football. I mean, not real football, but you know, it's what the rest of the world calls football. This is football. And last I checked, football, that's ah, a drinking sport. That's ah, a drinking sport. You do a lot of drinking, right? I mean, it just goes hand in hand. So when you, and, and we've known that forever. And then all of a sudden Qatar says, no, nope, nope, not in the stadiums. And they're also making people that are oftentimes it's visitors, out of town visitors from wherever that are wearing the traditional garb, Qatar. And uh, they're wearing this garb and they're going into places where they, they can order the alcohol, where they can booze it up. And the establishments are saying, yeah, not with that garb on, not with the traditional garb on, because that's offensive. So you got all this stuff kind of going back and forth. Beer, no beer, booze, no booze. What you can wear when you're boozing it up, when you're not boozing it up. And then you've got this 6,500 people that built all these stadiums that got screwed or allegedly got screwed. It sounds like they probably did. This wouldn't be the first time, would it? It's not the first time, nor is it the last time. But I'll cover this stuff for you moving down the road because you're going to have some more incidents of that because this is this is just a time period in which people can do these shenanigans just like the whole Black Lives Matter and the the Antifa thing. They had the spotlight on them for a split second and they took advantage of it and they bashed those windows like there's no tomorrow. Do we expect to see more of this? Absolutely. There's going to be more of this. It's, this whole World Cup thing, I don't know if you knew, but it goes for like a full month. It goes for a full month. It's amazing. Just so much soccer. I mean, football. I mean, soccer. Uh. All right. My parents' dog is barking, so I got to end this podcast. Thanks for being here. We'll catch up soon. Talk then. Bye for now.